Good evening. If you have your Bible, take it and turn to Psalm chapter 2. And that's where we're going to park tonight. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to get into it as soon as I can. Uh, was it Thursday or, f- or Friday night, Adam, or Friday that we decided how, how we were going to cover this time where Brother Darrell was out? It, it, it may have been Thursday. It, in any event, I'll say it like this. Without complaining, I will tell you that this past week has been challenging uh, for me personally, and it has been a scary week for our country. And, and uh, with, with that in mind, I just... You know, without making excuses and without asking for your pity, I'll just tell you like I told Adam, it seems like in my preparation for tonight that I have laid the foundation for a mansion and I'm afraid that I'm going to build a a woodshed on it uh, tonight. And I just pray that God don't take me out behind that woodshed and, and, and spank me for my effort tonight. But I'm going to do the best job that I possibly can and I want you to, to listen as best you can. And I pray that by the end of, of whether it's 10 minutes or an hour, I pray that we'll be encouraged by God's Word. Amen? So let's pray. God, I, I just ask you now to intervene. I, I ask you to be with us in this time. I pray that you'd hide me, uh, remove me from the way, and remove all distractions out of our minds. God, help us to put aside the things of the world. And I just pray that as we look to your word, that we would be encouraged by it tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I don't know about you, but if if you've been paying attention to anything, I think one question that a sane person would ask uh, in the the current situation that we're in is, is what is going on? Uh, That's a question that I've asked over and over this week, what's going on? And uh, another question that goes with that is, what is God doing right now? What is He doing in all of this? What's going on and what is God doing? Well, I'm going to read to you uh, just a few verses. Or, or we won't read it all. We'll, we'll read one and I'll try to comment a little bit on it as we go. But if we're looking at, at Psalm 2, uh, I think it's important that we understand that Psalm 1 and Psalm 2, in whether it be in Jewish circles or in Christian circles, it's been generally understood throughout history that these two chapters uh, go together, that, that these two work together. Uh, we have them separated now in our Bible, but, but throughout history these have been understood to go together. And, and they kind of work like a set of French doors, if you will, um, in introducing us to the, to the Psalms. And, and they work together in such a way that they let us know from the, right off the bat that the book of Psalms is more than just Hebrew poetry. And it's so much more than just the songbook of the Jews, but it is in fact the inspired and living Word of God fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And as such, Psalm 1, it shows us uh, the choice of living in the way of the righteous and living in the way of the wicked. Uh, Furthermore, it shows God's authority over the individual, while Psalm 2 points out that there is a consequence for the decision we make when it comes to living in the way of the righteous or the wicked. So you have that choice, but there is also something that we need to be made aware of and and that needs to be taught uh, out in in the world. We need to preach this out in in the public square that that, that there's a choice in how we live, whether that be the way of righteousness or the way of, of wickedness, and there will be consequences for the choice that we make. And Psalm 2 also points out not the authority of of God over the individual, but the authority of God over the nations. And and I think that that's significant tonight because if, you know, no matter where you stand on current world events or how you understand it or what your level of, of a lack of understanding is about what's going on, I think you and I can agree when we're looking at what's going on 
Uh, no matter which side we look on, I think there's been a fair amount of plotting taking place, whether that be on the left or the right. And I don't want to make it political. I'm not here to preach politics to you, but I don't care which party the politician falls in. I think there's been a fair amount of plotting taking place on both sides. And it's hard to tell up from down and left from right and right from wrong. And I don't know the answer when, when we ask this question, what in the world is going on? I don't know and, and don't understand all of it. And I'm not going to pretend to, but I know the one who does. I can't control any of it tonight, but this is significant, the things that are taught in Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 as far as the choice that we have to live right or wrong, that the consequences are there for the choice that we make. And God has authority over individuals and He has authority over nations. Now, how is that significant to you sitting in the pew tonight? I need to submit this to you. It's going to be uh, very uh, awfully difficult to trust God's control over your uh, individual life if you don't trust His power and His supervising authority over the unfolding events of history. He's got the whole world in His hands. Amen? If you can't understand that and put trust in that, you're going to have a hard time trusting Him to have control over your own individual daily life. So it's significant, the order, I think, when we see Psalm 1 and 2 and the way that they work. Uh, but the Bible says here, when, we, when we're asking this question, what in the world is going on? The Bible would tell us this, why do the nations rage and the people plot? There's been a lot of plotting going on. It says, and the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then He shall speak to them in His wrath and distress them in His deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Amen. Now, I think I'm going to tackle, try to tackle the, the second half of this chapter uh, next week, uh, next Sunday night. And I, I'm, I'm going to be prayerful about that and ask you to pray for me as we handle verses 7 through 12 uh, next week, Lord willing. Now, that's subject to change because I seek to put Jesus in control of what I'm preaching on. Uh, but tonight, we're going to look specifically at verses 1 through 6. And, and I just have a simple thought for you. And if we don't get anything else, let me just say the big idea for this whole deal uh, right now. And it's the, we could really sum up what I'm trying to tell you tonight in two words. And I want you to be encouraged by these two words. You ready for it? Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns reigns regardless of what you watch on the news or see on social media or read in the newspaper, Jesus reigns. And regardless of all of those networks, I come with news from a higher network that tells you that Jesus reigns over heaven and earth no matter what the world situation at this present time. In verse 1 it asks, the question, why do the nations rage and why do they plot a vain thing? If you'll look back up in Psalm 1 at verse 2, it tells us it, on an individual level, it tells us that his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. And that's on an individual level and it's talking about people who are living in the way of righteousness, it says that a person who is, who is a, a, a man or woman of God who is following and seeking to serve God in their life, it says that that person being righteous meditates on the Word of God day and night. Yet those in the lost and dying world around us and in the uh, evil systems of this world 
they do not meditate on God's Word, it says that they plot, that they scheme, that they come together and formulate plans. They, they come up with, with a playbook, if you will, to accomplish their goal. But notice what it says about that plot, that it is a vain thing. Meaning that whatever it is, when we ask what in the world is going on, we know that the, the, the lost and dying world that does not seek to serve God is up to something. And I'm telling you tonight on the authority of God's holy word, that whatever the world's up to tonight, it will not work. So be encouraged and find assurance in that. That whatever the world's up to tonight, it won't work. It says that the kings of the earth, notice uh, here that we have moved from the individual level from, from chapter 1 and we're now looking uh, in at the, uh, the fact that there's authority over nations here, but notice that what started out, and here's a, Here's a key, a little buzz word that I think we've heard all too often uh, over the past few years. Have y'all heard the term grassroots movement? When, when we have political talk and all, you, you hear this term grassroots movement. Well, here, if you kind of look at it and imagine with me, here we, we have what is a grassroots movement here because in chapter 1, in, in Psalm 1, we see the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked or the ungodly. And notice in, in verse 4 of Psalm 1, it says that the ungodly are not like the righteous. Uh, the wicked are not like the righteous. They are like the chafe which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the, the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish and we see this grassroots movement take place. And I'm telling you tonight that, that at the individual level in our country, people have been in rebellion against the Lord. And, and it seems that it has caught uh, a... It, it's caught a... I'm looking for a word here. It's, it's come together just so, and it's building steam. There it goes. It, it's kind of come to a head. Uh, things seem to be setting up to fall apart. If you're watching and seeing the same stuff I'm seeing, it's gaining speed and momentum, this movement, so much so that it seems that the kings of the earth are, are here together. This uh, United Nations, if you will, not the United Nations, but, but a United Nations of the kings of the earth, the rulers they have set themselves, which is a, a war term. They've set themselves. There is a military term here of, of making ready for battle, uh, getting ready for war. And they've come together and you've got to ask yourself, what in the world, what could be such a, a formidable opponent and such a great threat that all the nations, all the rulers and, and all the leaders of the world, what, what are they against? What have they set themselves against? If you look, dear, it says that they've set themselves against the Lord. That is Yahweh. In, in, my, in my Bible, that is the Lord with all capital letters, capital L, capital O, capital R capital D. They've not set themselves against just the idea of God or against uh, any other, you know, God that we could talk about out there when you talk about all the other religions. They're not talking about uh, just uh, folks who have a belief in, in a God that's certainly not the God of the Bible. This says they've set themselves up against I am the God of the Bible. And it's worse than that. It says they've set themselves against the Lord and against His anointed. Now this is a capital A when you look at anointed in, in my book. And that lets me know that this is talking about a special somebody and the anointed here we need to understand 
This is the messianic connection. The anointed one is who we're talking about. Uh, in the New Testament, we refer to him as Christ. See, the systems of government and the leaders of the world, when we ask ourselves, what in the world is going on tonight? Well, the world has set itself against Yahweh and against His anointed one, Jesus Christ. And that is the story of human history. That's the great political rivalry of the ages. You see, because since the beginning when God said, let us create man in our own image, it's not too far from that. You see them get together and say, let us build a tower up into the heavens to make our na a name for ourselves. And those same, uh, you know, fast forward into the, the next book. When you read further into the Bible and you see that God has taken His people through a time of trial and He's taken them through a time of slavery and He's brought them out and taken them to a holy hill where He gives them a, a Ten Commandments to live by and the rules that they should uh, carry out the, the business and, the, and the, uh, the, the lifestyle of the country there with, with the commandments that He gives them. And before Moses gets back from uh, that time with God on that mountain, they are there and they say, you know what, let us, what was it, a golden calf? Let us build a golden We've been in rebellion against God from the beginning. When you ask yourself, what in the world is going on? I got to tell you, people are rebelling against God. And here's the mission statement of this rebellion in verse 3. If you look in verse 3 of Psalm 2, the mission statement of this rebellion, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. There's the story from the French Revolution one of the revolutionaries climbed up uh, to the, on the top there at Notre Dame and cast down one of the crosses and basically, uh, probably not in these exact words, shouted out to the crowd that we're, we're going to basically do away with everything that will remind you of God. And, and out of the crowd, someone shouted back that you'd have to pull down the very stars from heaven. People, the world is in rebellion against God. It wants nothing to do with His rule. It says, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast their cords from us because they see God as an oppressor. Uh, this, this picture that we should see in, in verse 3, we should have the idea of a, of a yoke. Now a yoke, shows, if, if you're going to put a yoke on something, then that shows that you're in control of it, that you own it. That you, that you have uh, all the steering ability and what you say is what goes when you put a yoke on something. It, it shows ownership. And, and here, uh, they're looking at it in, in that way and they're, they're seeing this as a negative. The world does not want anything to do with the yoke of, of Christ. They don't want anything to do with the rule of God in their life. They see it as an oppressor in their life. And it, the, the world around us, the lost and dying world, sees the rule of God as an interference to their happiness and, and, and an interference to the things that they want. After all, ain't that all we ever want? It's just what we want. But what they fail to understand, the world and, and, and the, the systems of government, the, the evil principalities and rulers of this world, they fail to, to, to realize that, that the bonds here... We, for the Christian, for the one who's experienced the love of God, it's not a bond of oppression. It's a bond of love. After all, if we think about it, this all it is, in the name of freedom, they're rebelling against their creator. In the name of freedom, they're rebelling against the rule of God in their lives, in the lives individually of the people and at the government level, the rule of God over a nation. But I'm here to tell you, we need to stop and think about this because is a tree really free tonight if we pull it up by the roots and, and, and take it out of the soil? Has it really gained freedom? No. How about a fish? Brother Darrell, you love to fish. I know you're probably watching at home, but when we uh, go and, and when we fish 
Is a fish really free when you take the hook out of its mouth and free it from that hook? Is the fish really free? No. Or a train derailed from its tracks, has it gained freedom? Really? We would, we would call that crazy, wouldn't we? A derailed train has not gained its freedom Neither, I submit to you tonight, neither has a person or a nation who's got itself out, of the, out from under the rule of God, neither has it found its freedom. So we see the mission statement of this rebellion against I am and his anointed Christ. But we see not only the rebellion of sin in these verses, in, in the next few verses we see the response of the sovereign Lord. You ask yourself, what in the world's going on and what is God doing? What is God doing? With all that we see in the news and on social media and in the newspapers, both here and abroad throughout the world, what is God doing? I'm telling you tonight, I know what God's not doing. God's not pacing the floor on, uh, in heaven. He's not pacing the floor on social media trying to figure out what all the fuss is about. God's not solemnly seated in His war room with His generals advising Him on moves that He should take to prepare for war. God has not been taken uh, undercover and, and into a bunker in an undisclosed location to wait for a safer time to come out. That's not what God's doing right now. As much as America seems to be going down a path that you and I don't agree with, and as much as it seems that we're in rebellion against the sovereign Lord, I can tell you that God's not nervous about it, and He's got a plan when we have a plot. Amen? Through all the plots of history, throughout all of time, no matter what mankind has devised, God has had a plan and He has seen it through and He'll continue to do so. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Thank you. We have participation in here because He tells me so. The Bible tells me so. Listen, I know that He's got a plan and that, that He is... Uh, in authority over the events of human history, I know that God is now and forevermore. Notice that it says that He who sits in heaven, I wonder where He sits. He sits on the throne, amen? Regardless of what the world does in rebellion against Him, He is sitting on the throne and now and forevermore He reigns in heaven and on earth. So, be encouraged and take heart tonight because you and I might not always know what's going on, but we know the one who does. It says that he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. When, when we tend, when, when we as people in our own lives as Christians, listen, there's times when we decide we're going to do our own thing. Uh, there's times when we decide that we're going to go against what the, the, the Bible's told us and we're going to do what we think will make us happy. Uh, there is a time right now in our nation where things seem, listen, it's, there's been times in the past where we seem like we were running from God. Get ready, friend, because I think we're about to change into another gear and go faster. But I'm telling you, God is not nervous about it. He's not surprised. He's not scared. The Bible tells me that when people rebel against Him and try to do things outside of His will and outside of His authority, it tells us that God laughs. And I'm telling you tonight, He's laughing, but it's not funny. We can be comforted tonight 
No matter what we see on the television, hear from our neighbors, read in the newspaper, as uncertain as times are, I know how he, how the Bible, you know, the Bible tells me that he's in control of all of history. If you were to fast forward, we're not going to turn there because I'm closing, but I just want to remind you tonight, he's not surprised and he's in control. And in the book of Revelation, we see the picture where they search the throne room. They look all over high and low looking for one worthy to open the scroll. And if I understand it correctly, that scroll is a scroll that represents the, the telling of time throughout all of human history. And there was not one found who was worthy to open the scroll, but they found a lamb. And he was worthy to open the scroll. Amen? God is in control. I don't always feel like I'm in control. I know that you don't. And there are times when I feel scared to death when I look at what's going on around me. But when I look to the throne, I find one who's in, in control and in charge. And I know that regardless of the plots of man, I know that God Almighty has a plan tonight. Take courage and, and, and take heart in that. And let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this Night, I thank you for the truth of your word. I, I do believe that that was a simple message tonight. But it was a true message, God. We know that there are times of uncertainty. We know that there is a time in uh, history here in our nation where it seems that the, the leaders of uh, our nation and the leaders of the world are, are plotting. And we don't know what they're up to, God, but it seems that the world is in full rebellion against you. But I'm praying tonight that we would put our trust in you I'm praying tonight that no matter what may come, God, I'm just uh, praying that we would be a, a people who would place our faith in you and trust you and know that you are in control of all the events of history and whatever it is that the world uh, may be trying to do, God, we know that it will fail. And we know that you will reign forevermore on the throne. And help us to take that truth into this week and live uh, in a way that, that shows that, that we believe it and in a way that shows the, that we share the love of Christ with the people around us so that uh, others would, would come to see you as a sovereign Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.